Hypokalemia is a condition characterized by serum potassium levels below 3.5 milliequivalent per liter. While mild cases may be asymptomatic, severe hypokalemia can pose life-threatening risks. Potassium plays a vital role in maintaining cell membrane potential, particularly in cardiac, nerve, and muscle tissues. The regulation of total body potassium is primarily managed by the kidneys and endocrine system, although transient physiological shifts can significantly affect measured serum potassium levels. Clinical Features Hypokalemia can manifest in various ways across multiple organ systems. Central nervous system symptoms include weakness, numbness, cramps, and hyperreflexia. Gastrointestinal effects may present as ileus, nausea, and vomiting. Renal manifestations often involve metabolic alkalosis. The cardiovascular system is particularly vulnerable to severe hypokalemia, with potential complications ranging from various arrhythmias to characteristic ECG changes, such as ST segment depression, flattened T waves, QD prolongation, and U waves. Typical ECG changes include ST segment depression, flattened T waves, QD prolongation, and U waves. Etiology. The causes of hypokalemia can be categorized based on the mechanism of potassium depletion. Intracellular shift occurs when potassium moves from extracellular to intracellular space, often due to alkalosis, insulin administration, or beta agonist use. Decreased intake, while less common, can result from low potassium diets, chronic alcohol abuse, or eating disorders. Increased loss is the most frequent cause, stemming from gastrointestinal losses, renal losses, or excessive sweating. Various medications can induce hypokalemia, including penicillins, lithium, and catecholamines. Other less common causes include acute leukemia, lymphomas, and recovery from megaloblastic anemia. Evaluation. Assessing hypokalemia involves several key steps. The primary diagnostic test is measuring serum potassium levels, with levels between 2.5 and 3.0 milliequivalent per liter, considered moderate hypokalemia, and levels below 2.5 milliequivalent per liter, classified as severe. Magnesium levels should also be assessed, as hypomagnesemia can both cause and exacerbate hypokalemia. An electrocardiogram, ECG, is crucial to evaluate potential cardiac complications. A thorough review of the patient's medication list is essential to identify any contributing factors. Management. The first step in managing hypokalemia is to identify and address its underlying cause. Common etiologies include 1. Gastrointestinal losses, such as vomiting and diarrhea. 2. Renal losses, such as diuretic use and hyperaldosteronism. 3. Transcellular shifts, such as insulin administration and beta-adrenergic agonists. 4. Inadequate intake. Potassium supplementation can be administered orally for mild to moderate cases, while intravenous administration is necessary for severe cases or when oral repletion is not feasible. Oral administration is preferred unless severe symptoms or levels below 2.5 milliequivalent per liter. Every 10 milliequivalent of KCL increases serum potassium by approximately 0.1 milliequivalent per liter. Intravenous potassium must be administered cautiously to minimize complications. Oral administration is preferred unless 1. Serum potassium is below 2.5 milliequivalent per liter. 2. Severe symptoms are present, such as cardiac arrhythmias or muscle paralysis. 3. The patient is unable to tolerate oral intake. If hypomagnesemia is present, magnesium supplementation is crucial to correct both the magnesium deficiency and facilitate potassium repletion. Magnesium plays a vital role in potassium homeostasis. Hypomagnesemia can lead to refractory hypokalemia due to increased renal potassium wasting. Therefore, it is essential to assess magnesium levels in patients with hypokalemia. Supplement magnesium if deficient, serum magnesium less than 1.8 mg per deciliter. Consider empiric magnesium supplementation in cases of severe or refractory hypokalemia. 
Oral potassium repletion. Oral potassium is inexpensive and rapidly absorbed. KCL tablets are available, with elixir form as an alternative, though less palatable. Cater extended release tablets may be difficult for some patients to swallow. Increasing dietary potassium intake can supplement or replace tablets for home treatment. Intravenous potassium administration. IV potassium must be given in dilute solutions to minimize cardiac toxicity associated with rapid potassium shifts. The infusion rate of KCL solutions should not exceed 10 milliequivalent per hour. Generally, IV potassium concentration should not greater than 40 milliequivalent per liter. Side effects include local tissue burning, phlebitis, and sclerosis. Additional considerations. Treat hypomagnesemia if present alongside hypokalemia to ensure effective potassium repletion and prevent refractory hypokalemia. Recheck ECG after potassium repletion treatment to assess for resolution of hypokalemia-related ECG changes and to monitor for potential hyperkalemia. Hypokalemia in the setting of acute or recent myocardial infarction increases the risk of ventricular fibrillation. Closed cardiac monitoring is essential during potassium repletion in these patients. Provide patients with printable potassium-rich food table. Emphasize the importance of adherence to prescribed medications to prevent recurrence of hypokalemia. Question 1. What is the approximate increase in serum potassium level for every 10 milliequivalent of KCL administered? The correct answer is C. Every 10 milliequivalent of KCL will increase serum potassium by approximately 0.1 milliequivalent per liter. Question 2. What condition, if present alongside hypokalemia, should be treated to ensure effective potassium repletion? The correct answer is B. The presence of hypomagnesemia alongside hypokalemia should be treated to ensure effective potassium repletion. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscription button. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below in the comment section.